Hello everyone and peace of Christ to all of you. Please invite your friends and uh, we will have a good time together and learn how to focus and how to show the stupidity of those who they are trying to make the stupid one look smart. Uh, but before we start, uh, just to inform you that tonight, uh, late at night, uh, we will be in the other account, Quality of Life, and the topic will be why boyfriend and girlfriend is not healthy lifestyle. Maybe the title not enough for you to understand, which means why it's wrong to have such a relation, boyfriend and girlfriend. Now, for sure, you don't have to agree with me. This is your personal opinion. Live as you wish, and you will die as you wish too. And those who go to heaven, they go to heaven, and those who choose not, they, it's up to them. So for us, we share advices, and people live as they wish at the end of the day. So this is, will be many hours from now, about 10 hours from now. If you like to join us, I will post a link for it so you can join us later. Now, the topic today, and let me post the link for those who are like to join us. <clears throat> this is the link. The topic today is relativity of time. You know, the Muslims, they made tons of articles, thousands, millions actually, and those articles trying to prove to us that Islam is something special. Islam is a book of science. Quran knows what they are talking about. So if we go and search, we will find tons of articles. And each one of them, by the way, give us different opinion. All of them, they share the same thing that uh, Quran speak about relativity of time. But if you read the details and the numbers, you will see how the stupid e expose each other. And I call them stupid. I'm not calling all Muslims. I'm calling those who made these articles. Because it, they cannot even consistent with their numbers. But just before we start, just to show you how stupid the idea they are trying to bring to us. As an example here, this is a this is a video. Uh, <clears throat> if you remember, we have a person who called us uh, before. His name is Budi from Indonesia. He's the one who mentioned to me the relativity of time. But I know about it for sure. But I mean, he is the one who came with this. But just before we start, who is the one who the Muslims quote when they speak about relativity of time? If you go and read their article, they will see they are quoting for you a Jewish man, Einstein or Einstein. According to Einstein, time would pass more slowly for somebody driving vehicle. I mean, here you see the stupidity, and I will explain to you how easy to explain the stupidity. If Einstein knew about it, and he is a Jew, so what make Allah God if he knew about it? I mean, Einstein, he mentioned this before anyone else mentioned it, right? I mean, his, his, his theory, at least he have details, he have a theory. The Quran says nothing but stupid things. And they try to make it that he is as smart as Einstein, but just to make it for, for the sake of argument. If Einstein, he knew it, does that mean Einstein is God? It must be he's Allah himself. Because here we go, Einstein, he did not read the Quran. And he got it. You know what I mean? Do you see how stupid the idea? Are we following guys? Because if this is something nobody knows save God, then nobody knows save God. If we as a human, we are able to know without, without the God, that means there's nothing special there. However, the Quran never say what Einstein is saying. It's all a fraud and fabrication. Actually, it says the opposite. But we will go. <clears throat> but this is the idea how it is. We take a human being and usually he is either a Christian or he is a Jew. I mean, why he is not a Muslim? Albert Einstein was born in the middle class German Jewish family. Here we go. But Allah, he cursed the Jews. He said they are pigs and monkeys. They don't understand anything. They are the same as a donkey who carried the Torah, but they know nothing. Uh, look like we have difficulty in the stream a little bit. <clears throat> so here we notice that the idea from the beginning is very stupid and very silly. And then if we ask the Muslims, what is the relativity of time? And how, how this is, can be mentioned in the Quran? 
uh, the Muslims, they will tell you this. Listen to this. This is Abdul. He is from Indonesia. You know, I ask him, why, why in the Quran there is Jesus? He have all those miracles. He can make the. Uh, there is no data error. Hmm. Uh, look like we have a problem. Well done. We have a problem. The internet is not good. Do you hear me, guys? Uh -oh. Our internet is horrible. <clears throat> okay. Am I heard, guys? Or it is still... Because I can tell the internet is not doing good. You see me? Everything is fine? Internet is perfect? Okay. All right. So this is what this Abdul, he said to us when he called me. Can, uh, can, uh, can make the Red Sea become uh, join or become disappear. So many, so every prophet have different miracles. Hmm. So the miracles of uh, Prophet Muhammad, what hmm. I, what we can hear for from our Ustad, hmm. just for example, the scientific miracle in the Quran. Even you are objective, even even you were objective regarding that miracles. But I can say that the miracles of Prophet Muhammad, for example, is the scientific that Jesus do, did not have. I did not. I lost you. What? What is, what is the last thing you say? Hello? Jesus? Yeah? Hello, hello. Can, can you hear my voice? Yeah. The last thing you said. What the last thing I you admit, said? I admit that Jesus has many okay. miracles. Okay, it looks like the internet is horrible. Horribleine. So maybe we should delay the the broadcast until the internet is better. What we can do sometime in this area here, we have a very bad internet when it's come to do to uh, upload, not to download. Okay. Hmm. I don't know, should I continue or, or, or change the timing? Should we change the time? Internet is good? I don't know, because I see it's losing. From my side, I can see it's losing connection. It's going up and down. Something not right. Okay, anyway, let's try what we can do. If not, then we have to go live again and do it again, if we have to. Uh, anyway, so he mentioned to me that the Quran has scientific facts. So Jesus, he can raise people from death. Yes, he can make the blind see. Yes, but Muhammad, he had miracles too. Where? The Quran. Huh? But you know, just to show you the stupidity, I, you know, I, I use the word stupidity because I don't find, you know, my, my English is not really good. You know, it's not my first language. You know, I mean, I'm sure there's a better word than stupidity, which is more aggressive. But I cannot find more aggressive word than the stupidity to use it. Maybe ignorance. I don't know. It's still not good for me. Stupidity is not even good. This is, this is more than stupid. Because look what the Muslims, they say to us. That the Quran itself is a miracle. The Quran itself is a miracle. But the Quran says Allah gave Muhammad no miracle. He refrained. So how the Quran is a miracle, and yet you Muslim Muslims say that the Quran says. Uh, in chapter 17, verse number 59, we refrain from sending miracles. That's mean Allah, he refrain from sending miracles. If the Quran is a miracle, then he, he shall not say the sentence because the same sentence supposed, supposedly is a miracle by itself. Do you understand what I'm saying? If the Quran is a miracle, 
And then Allah in the Quran says, we refrain from sending a sign. Well, is it the Quran a sign? You know, the Muslim Muhammad and they say yes. Muhammad, he says, if you can make a Quran like this, but who was talking about the Arabic, you know, like, you know, but the Quran is the most stupid book ever you can imagine. And this is one of the stupidity. How the Quran contains scientific science and Allah, he says, in the Quran, we refrain from sending signs. Why? Because former generation, they refuse to accept them, which is absolutely stupid statement too. Why? Because we Christians and the Jews, we accept the miracles of the prophets. And if you don't believe me, go up in the Bible. So this is a false excuse. So if the Quran is a book have miracle, then Allah should not say we refrain from sending sign, which he says, listen, here we go. The signs is there. But here he is saying he refrained from sending this sign. And the funny, this verse came after <laughs> after the chapter of the moon chapter, where the Muhammad he said, uh, uh, he split like the Allah he split the moon or the moon split. He did not actually, actually he say Allah, which is nothing but the eclipse. And the funny too that this verse here is in the chapter of Al Isra. Isra, it's the person who go from place to place, and this is about relativity of time. Perfect. According to, according to Muhammad, uh, Muhammad was taken to heaven in the top of a flying donkey. And when Muslims they speak about relativity of time, I die laughing. Why? Because maybe they don't know what relativity of time is. Let us see. Actually, there's a video I wanted to show you. Again, just a reminder, later at, at night we will be in the other channel why boyfriend and girlfriend is not healthy lifestyle um, feel free to join us if you care uh, there's a video actually i want to share with you <clears throat> about relativity of time let us see Give me a second. Hi, I'm Rebecca. Always Muslims, when they speak about something, never take their explanation for any theory in the world. Because, first of all, the theory is not coming from them. Number two, they bend it, crock it, put filler in it to make it look sound as they wish. Never take it from a Muslim article here in front of us somebody is asking question uh, about what happened if I would travel faster than the speed of light the channel name is Nobel Prize and they're the supposed scientists are talking so what will happen if I go in the speed of light and we have a link for the, the, the video and the info of our video here Hi, I'm Rebecca, and my question is, what would happen if we travel over the speed of light? Hi, Rebecca. Uh, so you asked what happens, what would happen if you could travel faster than the speed of light. Um, you obviously know that Einstein told us that the speed of light was a limiting velocity. Uh, what that means is that you can't travel faster than the speed of light. And the reason you can't is that it would take an infinite amount of energy to speed you up to the speed of light. So, um, for you know, we accelerate protons in these big accelerators and smash them together. And the protons in these big accelerators with enormous expenditure of energy have been accelerated to almost the speed of light, 99.999999% of the speed of light. And that requires a lot of energy. But even to go from that velocity, which is very, very close to the speed of light, to the speed of light would require another infinite expenditure of energy. So you cannot be accelerated to the speed of light unless you have an infinite amount of energy to spend travel at the speed of light are particles which have no mass. Uh, 
<laughs> and they always travel at the speed of light. <laughs> so the only one can travel in the speed of light is particles. And here the Muslims, you know, they say to us that one day for Allah is one like a thousand day for you. And this is mentioned in the in the, in the New Testament, in uh, I think Second Peter. So, but in the Bible we don't say this is discovery of science. I mean, this is not. First of all, God don't have time. You see, time for God does not exist. Before God created everything, there was no matter, no time. So. When when the Bible says one day for God is the same as a thousand day for a thousand year for you, it's telling us that time means nothing to God. You die, generation come, generation come after, but God is there. That's the whole story. Have nothing to do with science, and it's not about science. The Muslims they claim something written in their book, which is stolen from what is written in our book, and they are making a fuss about it, story about it, science about it. I mean, imagine if this is the same verse written, you know, about 1,000 years uh, for, for you is the same as one day for God, 600 years before Muhammad, and even is mentioned in the Old Testament, which means thousands of years before Muhammad. So how the Muslim, they can claim that this is science for them, and how it can be science anyway. Uh, because if you say really, if you take it literally, that Allah have a day, that's mean Allah is included inside the matter he is a matter himself you know what i mean we just heard this gentleman here explaining that if in, in order to go in the speed of light uh, you have to have like you have to be uh, small particles special particles not a mass if you have a mass then you cannot reach that point the Quran says that Allah is light. But is that metaphorical? The Muslims, obviously, when they want, they make it metaphorical. When they want, they make it physically. But all of us, we knew that Allah have a shin, Allah have a hand, Allah have a fingers, five fingers in each hand. He have a nose, he have a toes, he have a, a leg. So it cannot, he cannot be light, for simply he is not uh, without a mass. As we heard this gentleman, listen carefully again what he said. The woman she is asking the, the young girl, uh, can I travel in the speed of light? How I can accomplish that? So what is the problem? The problem is this. An infinite amount of energy to spend. The only thing that does travel at the speed of light are particles which have no mass. Have no, ma no mass. This is the condition. Particles who have no mass. Allah have hands, Allah have shin, Allah etc. Now, let us talk about angels. In the Quran, uh, Allah, he says, supposedly, he created angels from light. So they are qualified, actually, to go in the speed of light. But there's a problem. The Quran says, too, that angels, they have a physical shape. As an example, Muhammad, he came as a prophet to us by a story that a man appeared to him in the cave of Hara. That's mean the angel, he is a man and he have a particles who have mass, not particle without mass. And they are one body, huge body. Therefore, this angel, if he is, like I'm talking in science now, not in miraculous way. Uh, if, he, if we use this a theory of Einstein, this angel, it's impossible for him to come from the heaven, delivering a message to Muhammad in the way it happened, for this is impossible. However, if he is a light, and then let us say, in somehow he was able, or God made him, transform his image into a physical being. Is that possible for God? Yes, that's why we call him God. But look what the problem we have here. When when the Muslims, they mention this story for us, or they mention this uh, theory of uh, Einstein, they say the following. According to Einstein, time would pass more slowly for somebody driving vehicle at speed of close of uh, velocity of light than the inhabitants of the earth. Okay. But this is mean that Allah in himself in a spaceship. And that's mean Allah himself is a matter. 
He is a material, he is a particle, particle with no mass. So here with the Muslim, they say to us that Allah is not God. Allah is just a particle who moves so fast and he is not a stationary in one place. And because he is so small, with no mass, he can move in such a way. And that will make a difference of timing. Because remember, when here they quote for us, they say, uh, Einstein time would pass more slowly for somebody driving a vehicle at speed close to the facility of light. Uh, but they did not say in the speed of light, close, you see, close. But the fact, you know, until now there's no human being can say one day we are going to travel in the speed of light for this is mission impossible. Because in order to do that, you have to get ready to get rid of your physical existence as a body which is billions of particles connected together, which means you should have no blood, no bones, no flesh, you know, a little tiny particle. And that little tiny particle should be sponsored by amazing power in order to make it move. That is the light. So here, what Einstein is talking about, about you living in a place, other person is traveling from place to place. If this person is traveling in the speed of light, or close to speed of light, or even very fast speed, time will go for him differently. And look how the Muslims usually they add things to the article. Look what they did. When the inhabitant of the earth pass 100 year, it might take a person 50 days to this place at the speed of nearing uh, of the light, speed of light. Okay, R look at the numbers. 100 days, it may take 50 days, okay? But that doesn't fit with the Quran. I mean, even they try to, 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 to make numbers there, and I don't trust anything they say in this article, but that will prove the Quran to be stupid. Why? Because the Quran says that one day for Allah is equal to 1,000 years of your time. In different verses says, that one day for Allah is equal to 50,000 years of your time. And this is why here they added the word 50 days. But look what happened now. There's a huge difference between 50 days and 50,000 years. Aren't you using the article, I mean, using the theory of Einstein? Or the theory of Einstein, it doesn't say that the difference is 1,000, 1 to 50,000. What, according to your article, your own hand, it says that past one hundred days it may take a person 50 days all right that's mean it just half of the time will be different but the quran is quoting for us a huge difference that one day for allah is equal to one thousand year and different verse one day is equal to fifty thousand years but if we read together <clears throat> Uh, yeah, we don't want to change the topic. Uh, yeah, the one is talking about the church. They use the word day in the Quran. Uh huh. The Muslim now will explain to us. Verse 5, Surah. It says the perspiration of the verse of uh, Surah, uh, the heights, the heights, not only the point of relativity of time, but giving also clear meaning, the Arabic word yom. The, uh, okay, what yom mean? It, that's about not only space of one time, one day, okay? It's about what? Which compromise, comprises 24 hours, but also certain period of time. This is makes make it easier to understand the six days mentioned in the Quran. I mean, look, look at the stupidity. The Quran mentioned six days, and now the Muslim trying to say, it does, it's not say the six days. It is a period of time. You see how the stupidity work? The hypocrisy? Is it does it, it says day, but it doesn't, it's not day. <laughs> so it's days, but it's not days. In the same time, he says, uh, he is showing you reference from the Quran supposedly. This is give a clue that the Jews and the Christians for interpretation the biblical account according which word was created in six days. Finding in the domain 
of space physics show that the universe in our world passed through many stages from states to galaxy etc so what they are saying to you the bible is stupid because the bible says uh, you know god he created in six days but god did not create it in six days it's a stages right but the muslims they forgot that the quran saying the word yawm as a 24 hours and how we can prove it if we go in the hadith i mean who understand islam better than muhammad right Let us see. This is how they lie, and this is how we get them busted. This is their prophet explaining how Allah created everything. Not only he called them days, he even given them names. Allah, the exalted, the, the glorious, created the clay in Saturday, and he created the mountains in Sunday, and he created the trees on Monday, and he created entire, entire labor in Tuesday created the light in Wednesday, and he caused the animals to spread on Thursday, and he created Adam on Friday afternoon. And you see here the word afternoon helping me a lot to get them even more busted with big spank in their bum. It's not only days, there's a name of Friday and Saturday and Monday. Here we are talking about afternoon. But in their articles, they are saying this is not about days. They are Zakir Naik. Uh, the Quran says God created the earth and the heaven in six days. He said, Brother Fittar, the word in the Quran means period. And this period, it can be millions of years. Okay? It says yom, day. And here we go. Your prophet is explaining it. And even speaking about Adam was created Friday afternoon. Here you see that the Muslims, they hide always information from you in order to create science from stupidity. Because look, the Quran in the article themselves they said Allah created the earth and the heaven in six days correct right. but Muhammad because he's a fraud he don't remember what he said in the Quran if you read carefully with me the hadith in front of us you will notice that Muhammad he added more days to the creation let us count together he created the clay in Saturday this is day number one all right he created the mountains on Sunday Okay, this is day number two. Count with me. Oh, what you need to do, just count the lines. I will have a line under the days. This is day number two. He created the trees in Monday. Okay, this is day number three. He created all things entirely in labor on Tuesday. Okay, this is day number four. And he created the light in Wednesday. Well, this is day number five. And he created the animals and spread it on uh, Thursday, this is day number six. And he created Adam Friday afternoon. Well, that's seven days. Correct? Right? Uh, a Muslim saying, Aya Sophia is a mosque now, Alhamdulillah. My friend, you see, this is actually, this is what help us to expose the faith of Islam. Already the mosque is in the hand of Turkey, but it's a matter of time. All of Turkey will not be Turkey no more because this is our land. This is Constantinia, and we will have it. You remember the Muslim, they say the same when they took Jerusalem. Alhamdulillah, we have Jerusalem. Jerusalem today is in our hand. And tomorrow and now, actually, we have a golden opportunity to take Al-Aqsa from you. And you cannot say you cannot do that. That is a golden opportunity. This is a very important move from Erdogan. In the same time, as soon Erdogan lose election, you will see the liberals of Turkey, they will take it back and make it as a museum so they can be friendly with us. Because they understand without us they cannot live. Turkey is collapsing, my friend. Just see what will happen to Erdogan very soon. Alhamdulillah. Now we go back to Muhammad and get him busted. Listen to this. The fraud Muhammad, he forgot how many days he said the Quran creating the universe. Right? Okay. Here is seven, the Quran says six. And this is Sahih. Sahih hadith. So when the Muslim they try to make it about thousand of years or million of years, and Muhammad he says Saturday and Sunday, one of them is lying. You choose one. Either the Muhammad and making the article are lying, or we take the words of Muhammad and he is the founder of Islam. He is the one who told us the Quran, and there is no way that a Muhammad who came fourteen hundred years after Muhammad can explain what Muhammad meant more than Muhammad, right? 
So obviously, those who made the articles are a bunch of a fraud, and they are trying to fabricate news. It's not there. Now we go back to the article, just for the sake of the fun. Already the already the the, the claim is destroyed by Muhammad's statement here, right? Because you see, if Allah created the earth in such a way, right? That's mean a day for Allah is not really a thousand years. You know what I mean? Because we are talking about what? We are talking about the earth. The earth. And remember, according to Islam, Allah, he came down to the earth when he created. He was in the top of the earth. This is why the Quran says after Allah, he finished creating the earth, he went up to heaven and he sat in the chair. So where he was, he was down in the earth. If you ask the Muslims how Allah he sat in the chair, they say this is a question we should not ask. You cannot ask how, you cannot ask, ask why, you cannot ask anything, right? Those questions, read carefully here. This is chapter 10, verse number 3. The fool Muhammad saying, <clears throat> Verily, your Lord is Allah, who created the heaven and the earth in six days. But we just showed you Muhammad saying seven days. And firmly established on the throne. The Muslim translation here is false. It says, uh, he went up to heaven. You know, he left himself up to the heaven. What from establishing the throne? If you change the translator, you will see how the Quran changed in a miraculous way. Because they are a fraud when they translate, they are liars. You cannot find single Muslim give us an honest and translation. Read carefully now. Stawa rose over. What happened? You know, how established became rose over. And how rose over was established. One of them is lying, correct? Do you understand? The Quran saying he rose over. So what he was? He was in the earth. <laughs> and here you ask yourself the question. We are talking about relativity of time, but Allah, when he was in the earth, one day for him was Saturday. Do you understand? Are we following? When Allah created the earth, he was in the earth. So one day for Allah is one day for Allah. It's one day, 24 hours. It's not 1,000 years. So they store a verse from the Bible. They make a story about it. They make a big, you know, balloon about it, claiming that this is science and this is Einstein. When the Quran making it clear that Allah, first of all, he moved, he's a particle. You see? When you say that Allah, he's Tawa, and then the Muslim, they put between two brackets, rose over. That's when Allah, he moved from point A to point B. What is point A? That is the earth. What is point B is his chair. Both of them, they are physical. And Allah himself, in order to move between them, he have to be, uh, you know, inside his creation. Because the heaven is a creation of Allah, supposedly. The earth is a creation of Allah, and Allah is moving between them, which means is inside his creation. And that will destroy all of Islam, because Muslims, they refuse to accept that God can be inside his creation. Not like in Christianity, we don't have a problem that God, he can come to us in the image of a bird, or he can come to us as a spirit, uh, which means there's no physical uh, uh, being to be seen. To be seen. Uh, or he can say to come to us as a man. And the Muslims, they fight this idea, but the fact that Quran proved that Allah is a physical object, and even the Muslims agree that Allah have a hand, Allah have a, a butt, Allah have a, a shin, foot, five fingers, etc. You can go right now to YouTube and search, Allah has a hand. And you see the Sheikh how explained to you that, oh, yes, Allah has a hand. What we can say is how Allah, he described himself. I'm just quoting him word by word. Other Muslim uh, Sheikh, he, he says, Allah have a foot. How we know that? And then he quote the Hadith, how Allah, he put his foot in the fire. And he described the foot of Allah as magnificent, sexy, beautiful foot of Allah. Alhamdulillah. Now, so here we see that the Muslims, when they speak about relativity of time, 
They forgot that their God, obviously, he cannot fit in that theory in every way, in every mean. Number one, Allah, he was in the earth, and there was no relativity of time. Day for him was day for him, the same as day for us. And the Quran proved that. Secondly, Allah, he rose over. If this is true, it's 1,000 years for us, equal to one day for Allah. That's mean when Allah he rose he was in the earth he was living a normal 24 hours day when allah he go to heaven allah he have a day equal to 1000 year of our time which mean by time allah will be old he's getting older that's mean there is a point of a start for allah because remember we are talking about time so if allah is exists inside the time and there's one day for Allah equal to 1000 year and this is literally not metaphorically as Muslim try to make it that's mean Allah he have day number one day number two and day number three until we have years and then the years became thousand and the, and the years they became millions so Allah have age and that would be funny and stupid so Allah is not infinite and he is not really he is an aging person so the whole idea you see it's just a stupid thing oh, what you need just think about it a little bit but just to show you how the Muslims answer stupid things, or how they put themselves in the trouble by saying stupid things. This is Mr. Budi who called me, and now he is going to explain to us about miracles. Okay, I will go with you, my friend. What, what's your name? What's your, what, what's your name? If, sorry, may I call you? You don't have to give your name, it's up to you, but give me a name so I can call you. Well, my name is Budi, Budi, Indonesian, Budi. Budi, okay, Budi. Mr. Budi, listen. You say that in the Quran there is scientific miracles. Did you say that? Yes, of, yes, fine. Okay, I I have a challenge, a friendly challenge. Don't take it as an offense. In front of everybody, we have more than a thousand people listening. If you can show me yes. one scientific miracle in the Quran, you are my hero. Choose anything you want. Go ahead. So you mean uh, you asked me to give me one example? Yeah, you know, because I, I say, I say, I say, this is a big fat lie, your stars, they say to you, it's a lie. It's a big fat lie, not only a lie, it's a big fat and it's my duty to prove it's a lie. And look what happened now. I am giving you open opportunity, choose anyone you want, and I will prove it to you that it's a fraud. Okay, I, I, I will take one example, okay? Mm -hmm. Okay, even you will object it. I will take from the time relativity of the Einstein that uh, I can say it is already already told in Quran and then 1,400 years in the back, Einstein copied. Hmm. So I mean, 100, more than 1,000 years. What verse we are talking about? Uh, uh, what, what verse we are talking about? Time relativity, I mean, in the Quran. Okay, where where is that? Where? In Al Marij, I think I'm not op open the Quran. For example, in Al Marij, Ayat Four, I no, think. No, I want you. I want you to search Google for what they say to you, and I want you to uh, read for me what they are saying, so to be sure that you are not quoting wrongly. Is that in chapter twenty? I, is that in I, is that in chapter twenty-two, yeah, I, verse number forty-seven? Al Marij, I think, Ayat number four. Uh, which which verse? No, I'm not. Which verse? Let's say that, that one year, that one day of our life will be 50,000 year of the Malaika, I think. No. You so see, it is a kind of time relativity. Okay, hold on. You see, here actually you just to prove to us that you do not know what are you talking about and the Muslims are just fooling around. This is in chapter 22, verse number 47. To here, this is about Judgment Day, and according to the Quran, actually, uh, uh, the Judgment Day uh, will be, in the Judgment Day, the angels will take him 50,000 years to go to heaven. But look what happened now. Okay. All right. I don't know if you are aware that the Quran mentioned that the angels take, take them, Yes. 1,000 years to go to Allah. Is it true? Yeah, now I, I do not uh, 
bring my my note. So what I remember there are two ayat saying regarding time right. relativity. Number one, all right, is is what you okay. But what you have just okay, uh, okay, one. All right, you can speak. Time, my what how how time and reverity is about? First of all, in the Bible it says that one day for uh, one day for God is one thousand year for us. This is in the Bible, long time before Muhammad. Secondly. What's, what does have to do with uh, time reverity? Are you saying that Allah He have time? Are you saying that Allah really He have fifty thousand years? Sorry, sorry. Do Allah have time? Do, sorry, yeah. do Allah live inside you're, time? You're, do Allah you're live? Wrong, I think, Siti. Can I can, can I say what is your wrong? Okay, go ahead. Yes, in the Bible, I, I know in the Bible that it is saying in the three Peters in the three. Three Peter, maybe I had four. I don't know. Uh, saying also in the Bible that mm. one day mm. will be one thousand year in the Allah days. You see, that ayat do not have any movement. No movement. What indication move? on that ayat? What movement? What does that mean? Movement. What you, movement? Like this, like this. City. For example, if you read again the time relativity of Einstein. Mm. You will see all the variable. It is t1, t0, and then speed of light, and then speed of the malaikat of or speed of the object. Okay, that's it. You see on the almad. Okay, hold on. If you see almad is number. The speed of the the, the speed of the that. angels. The speed of the angels. What is the speed of the angels? The speed of the angel. That is the v. If you know the it's, it's equation what? of the time relativity, it's, you know it. It what what, what is the speed? Aya, what is the speed of the angels? Once again, Okay, I, I will I will tell you slowly. Hmm. If you see that ayat that saying one day of hour will be fifty thousand year, hmm. you see on that ayat that hmm. the malaikat raise up, raise up mean there is a movement because of high speed movement. Then there is a time relativity. One ah, because the, of the movement. Ah, okay. Hours. Okay, hold on. Okay. Ah. What you see here, the stupidity is. The time relativity for whom? For the one is moving or the one who is there in heaven? Very naive. The, the Einstein is speaking about relativity of somebody observing both. Right? So like you are standing somewhere and there's two cars is moving in different speeds. All right? And how time go for both. Uh, but here we are talking about the one is moving is who is the angels. Okay, and who is the one one day for him is one one year, uh, uh, equal to one thousand year of our time? Allah. So, when one thousand year in our time pass, for Allah it's one day. So the angels it take them one day to go to Allah. And here we have something very funny to laugh at Allah, and everybody will laugh with us because the Muslim taking it you know not metaphorically as in the Bible says. But they are taking it physically because one day pass for Allah. That's mean Allah inside time. Allah, He go in the morning, He say, This is day number one, day number two, day number three. He have a calendar and He have day. That's mean Allah is not God for He have days like us. He is inside time and inside the rules of matters. This is number one. Number two, as long as it take the angels 1000 years to go from here to there, which means to Allah. In order for the angels to come down, they need to take 2,000 years because one day to go equal to 1,000 years of our time. To come back, we need another one day, which is equal to 1,000 years of our time. Total is 2,000 years. So how Muhammad was able to go to heaven and come down in a few hours? And look what will happen when I say that to him. So there, guys, there is, there, okay, okay, there, because there is a movement. Okay, I want to go with you. When Muhammad, he went to the heaven, he took with him Jibreel. How many thousand years took Jibreel to go to Allah heaven? You see, I'm going with your, I'm going with your story, and now you are getting your prophet busted. You are the one who said the angels will take them one thousand year in one place, fifty thousand years in another place to go to heaven. Now we have Muhammad who claimed he went to heaven in a few hours and he came back, and in the way he stopped even in Jerusalem and he prayed there. So. How many hours it took the Mr. Relativity angel who go in his speed, which you said 50,000 years, will take him to go just to heaven one way. How the same angel he was able to go with Muhammad 
for a few hours. The mic is yours. Yeah, I think it is very clear. Yeah, if you if you have uh, any education in the senior school, it already taught by our teacher that in the special relativity. I think it is it is and it is. Uh, my friend, my friend, my friend, you are changing the topic. You see, see, he will not answer. If you go to school, if you go to school, our teacher, the teachers that about relativity. I, wait, 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 what is the answer? What school? The school they teach you there's a prophet, he go on the top of a donkey, he go to heaven in a few hours and come back. This is what they teach you in school. He knew that this is, will be horrible for Islam. So we have to change the topic. See, you are not answering. You are the one who said to me, it takes them 50,000 years to go, and this is about relativity of time. Wonderful. It takes them how long? 50,000 years to go. 50,000 years just to go, which means to come back, they need 100,000 years to come back. Okay. Muhammad, he went up to heaven with his angel Jibreel in the top of a donkey. It took them, and the, so sure, the, the angel is not riding the donkey. Uh, he have wings. Uh, it took them a few hours to come back, to go and to come back, which means like a maximum yeah. of, of, of eight hours. So how yeah, it is 50,000 years, it became a few hours. What happened? Go ahead. It is like this, even you will not agree with me, but let me inform you, even you will not agree. It is like this, Pa. Hmm. Pa, pa in Bahasa means sir, yeah? Okay. So uh, there are two ayat in uh, Quran, that is uh, one first saying 50,000 years. Hmm. And in other ayat, it's saying 1,000 1, years. Correct. You know, it is not the time. If you know the time relativity equation, it will tell that it is only telling about the speed. So in that two ayat... No, 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 it's, no, 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 you, no, no, no. You see, now you are trying to, to, to hide what you just said. It's recording, my friend. You are the one who said it's about the movement. They are in movement, not as just a speed. It's in movement. So the angels are moving. Who is the one who's moving? The angels, correct? So the angels are moving, yeah. and those angels, when they move, it takes them 50,000 years to go to Allah heaven. That's wonderful. So the angels in the move, you are the one who mentioned the word movement, not me. So don't throw it away. So they are moving from point A to point B. Point B is in the heaven of Allah. Point A is in the earth. It takes them 50,000 years to go, 50,000 years to come back. This is 100,000 years. How Muhammad was able to do it in a few hours? Go ahead. I think you are wrong, sir. You are wrong. How? It's not taking 1,000 years, not taking that, that much time, not taking 50,000 years, but it is talking regarding the speed, not talking regarding the time. No, no, it's talking, no, it's taking... <laughs> you see the stupidity? Now the time does not exist. It's not saying 50,000 years. You go read. You are the one. Go play the video again from the beginning. You are the one who says, to, this is what relativity of time. Time and speed. If you take time out, there is no relativity. It's stupid. See, now he don't want to take it. He, he take it off. No, this is not about time. It's not about time. This is about movement. Movement. This is about uh, speed. No. Liars. So, Relativity of time exposing Muhammad to be a false and he's a fraud because if the angels need him 1,000 years at least to go and 1,000 years to come back, that is 2,000 years. And if they take them 50,000 years, whatever number you wish, that's mean it take him 100,000 years to come back. So how Muhammad was receiving verses about Aisha when they accused her second day or a few weeks after, after she be accused that she is a whore. In order to receive this verse, the angel is going to take him at least 50,000 years to deliver. Or if based in the 1,000 year version, it's going to take him 1,000 years in our time to come. So if he lived now from the house of Allah, it's going to take him 1,000 years in our time to come to us. Which means Muhammad, he died 1,400 years ago. So it's going to take him for uh, 1,000 years after the death of Muhammad. <laughs> so. The relativity of time proving Islam to be a fraud. And especially the Muslims are taking it literally. They cannot now play the game of metaphorically. You see, when you speak about literally, you cannot take it back. You cannot say, oh, this is was metaphorically. Uh, can you explain the hadith where Muhammad got the burak and the donkey? Uh, and why the face of the donkey is a face of a human? 
Well, we are talking about this issue now. Muhammad, he fly in the top of a donkey. It took him a few hours. We don't want to change the topic, but the relativity of time exposing Muhammad because he went up to all the heaven. He came back in a few hours. So Muhammad was moving in which speed? How close Allah is, is to, to Muhammad? And you see, the Muslim, they cannot say, uh, Allah took him. Allah can take him in a second. No, this is not what happened. Look what happened. Muhammad, he described that there is a donkey was sent to him, an animal between the size of a mule and the size of a donkey. And he ride it in order to go to heaven. So he was using a transportation and that transportation is a physical creature, have a blood. And we just heard the scholar, how he is saying that you cannot go in the speed of light for a reason you don't have the energy and you have a particles your particles you have a mass why i cannot go in the speed of light to spend the only thing that does travel at the speed of light are particles which have no mass uh, and they always travel at the speed of light now people have hypothesized that there might do muhammad have a mass you see even if Muhammad have no mass, and Muhammad is one small tiny particle, he don't have nose, he don't have toes, he don't have head, he is just a small little tiny uh, particle, which is, you can't even see. Let us assume Muhammad, he became that, the donkey he is riding, is he a particle? He have no mass? <laughs> even Muhammad described the size of his foot, he described the size of his waist, he described the size between his, uh, his neck and his ass. So. What Muslims are talking about? It take how long by the speed of light to go out of the galaxy? Just the galaxy. By the speed of light, the maximum speed ever you can accomplish. Actually, nobody can accomplish that. Because as he said, the scientist here, in order to go in the speed of light, you should have, you should be a particle with a lot of power, none stop power and that power will move you or you will move with it in a speed it's called the speed of light because you have no mass because simply you lose zero energy this is the ma no this is why it's important to have no mass you see when you have no mass you don't lose energy listen again uh, and they always travel at the speed of light of energy. So you cannot be accelerated to the speed of light unless you have an infinite amount of energy to spend. The only thing that does travel at the speed of light are particles which have no mass. Uh, and they always travel at the speed of light. Now people have hypothesized that there might exist particles which we've never seen that travel faster than the speed of light. And Im imagining such objects uh, immediately gets you into all sorts of problems, given everything else we know about how the universe works. Given such particles, you could communicate backward in time, and that leads to all sorts of causal inconsistencies. You could go back and do things in the past that would change the present, which doesn't make much sense. So most of those ideas are not taken very seriously, and uh, it is, as far as we know, going to continue to be impossible to accelerate ordinary matter to velocities of light, not to speak of velocities faster than the speed of light. See you. Hi, I'm Rebecca. So anyway, uh, they, they use scientists when they want, and they ignore scientists when they want. As an example, the Muslim, they claim, that the Quran speak about the Big Bang, but we just showed you Allah, He created the dust and the dirt in Saturday. The Muslim, they claim that when Allah, He says one day, it's not about one day, it's about millions of years. But Muhammad, He says Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, etc. So we cannot take Muhammadan explaining their religion seriously, for they are following a joker. And in order to cover the joker, they put makeup on him, he's a joker. They change his color, they change his clothes, 
they try to fix him inside certain kind of a clothing even the clothes doesn't fit for him so he looked like a joker for he is a joker now do we have any Muslim don't agree with me that it's very stupid to claim that the Quran speak about relativity of time actually there's an article I saw it goes even farther than that this article here made by Muhammadan and I find it very hilarious as an example they say time travel time travel look Muslims they go even farther in their in their fiction they say Uzair time travel who is Uzair the Muslim guy he said here all of us we knew the story of a Jewish prophet his name is Uzair uh, the between two bracket Israel in the second Quran Uzair passed by the city of Jerusalem after it was destroyed by Nebuchadnezzar he looked and he said how shall Allah bring this into life after it is death Allah wanted to show him that it it is easy for him to bring it the city into life and look what the verse saying Allah caused his death for a hundred years and brought and then he brought him up again to life when Allah asked Prophet and by the way this is translation is totally fiction there's no Uzair those names are not exist all is fictions go and read the verse chapter 2 verse number 259 you will find that 80% of what is written here is not there you believe it and the funny they make a quotation I mean do you see the quotation do you see the sign of the quotation do you see it quotation that's mean they are quoting Quran but it's not in the Quran all of this is not in the Quran If you don't believe me, I will go right away. Okay, chapter two, uh, 259, let us go. It's a scam. It is the biggest scam ever in history. Uh, stranger saying Catholic priests message women in dirty place to forgive sin. A stranger, uh, you see, uh, don't make me say words you don't like to hear go teach your prophet how he taught you that your mother she can give her boobs to a stranger to suck it before you tell us about Catholic priest I mean can you see how dirty your faith your prophet is ordering your mother to give her boobs to a stranger so if a Catholic priest he go to your house your mommy she will say to him oh you cannot enter the house before I suck at you and you are talking about Catholic priest now we go here to this verse 259 let us laugh together and you will see right away that the whole story is not there all the verse is not there I mean what else Isaiah and you where, where it says that well nowhere to be found here we go 259 we are closer hmm. all right where is Isaiah's story or like the one who passed by the town didn't say even who how this is became Uzair and etc okay so a guy he passed by a town and he said he didn't even say Jerusalem I mean do you see the word Jerusalem there where is the word Jerusalem there's no Jerusalem Nebuchadnezzar where is Nebuchadnezzar what is that it's not there it's all fabrication okay or like the one who passed in the town and he had trampled over the, its roof. He said, oh, oh, how Allah will bring this uh, to life after death? Huh? So Allah caused him to die. Who? The person for a hundred years. And then he raised him up again. And he said, how long you did remain dead? Here you see the stupidity of the story. Why? Because if you are dead, what how long? I mean, how stupid is that? The man he said, and between two brackets they add perhaps, he did not say perhaps. You see here you see the fabrication when they add those things. It's not there. He said, I remain de de uh, 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 dead uh, a day or a part of a day. He said, Allah, nay, you have remained dead for a hundred years. And the funny, they are saying this is a trouble of time. Trouble of time. How this is, can be trouble of time? If the guy is dead, Secondly, what happened to relativity of time? Is it one day for Allah is equal to 1,000 years of our time?
So the Muslims in their article, they make about, this is about time travel. How the guy, he did time travel, why did he go back on time? No, <laughs> I mean, the guy, he died. He wake him up, he says, do you know for how long you were dead? He says, maybe a few hours. But, but he's dead. You see, time is about being conscious. If you are dead, I mean, time means nothing to you. Anyway, you are out of time already, you are nothing. Time is about observing. Dead, you cannot observe anything. You can't see movement, you can't see sun moving, you can't see anything. Nothing happened to you. So, here they try to make this about time travel when the fact it's a stupid story. And Allah, he made him die for a hundred years. And here you see another side of the stupidity. Anyone know why? Who knows why? Why I find this is very stupid, additional to what we said. You see, if I want to prove to you that I can resurrect people from death, what does this have to do with time? Read the story. Read carefully. Or like the one who passed by a town and had the trumpet over its roots. He said, oh, how Allah will bring to life after death. But the verse after it, or the same verse in the story, talking about time now what, what, what this would prove okay so you are dead for a hundred years and now and no for for but for you you think it's a few hours but the fact it's 100 year okay so how we can prove to the dead man that he was dead for a hundred year where is the proof i mean how allah is proving to him something without proving it if i was dead what difference is going to make if it's 100 year or 1000 year? So let us say I die for a million and then you wake me up, you bring me back to life and you say, do you know how long you were dead? I say maybe an hour. You say, no, it's a million. Okay, but what is the proof? What is the proof of the time? And the time was passing for who? For the man or for Allah? If it was for the man, well, that's stupid because you prove nothing he was dead he was unconscious he cannot he cannot see he cannot notice he cannot feel he cannot he cannot recognize so you prove nothing same time in the article they say this is about time travel but how time travel work here how this is can be time travel now they say different look different uh, right away they jump to different topic but they don't explain how this happened how this is time travel how this is can be time travel? Do you know what time travel means? Time travel, you can go to the past. You can go to the future. The guy was dead. He did not move anywhere. He did not go anywhere. And what is time travel? We don't know. Huh. But in the title, it says time travel. How don't ask? I'm Muhammad I'm making a story. Now, our time travel. Okay, let's see how this will work. It says, and the day when uh, we he will gather uh, them together it will be as if they had stayed for an hour of a day the chapter of Eunice chapter 10 verse number 45 okay let's go there and love together hmm. it's a joke Eunice huh all right verse number 45 love with me Muslims this is our time travel now this is what? Our time travel. Okay. Look at this. And the day when he shall gather them, in the day of resurrection, together, it will be as it they had not stayed. Uh, I mean, this translation is horrible. All brackets, etc. I mean, the second you start seeing the brackets, it's like, okay, shish kebab. You know, I mean, the Quran is so clear to the point we have to add 10 bracket and 5 bracket inside one small verse. Brackets. Okay, here, this one have less brackets. Thank God. Let us see how stupid it is, the translation. And the day, on the day, when he shall gather them together. 
as thought they had tried but an hour of the day. What? This is our time travel. How this is work? What? Where is time travel? Where? How we are traveling in time now? Anyone can tell me? I mean, what this verse does really mean? The day of Allah, he put them together. It's like one hour. So what does that mean? They will not feel time. It's maybe one hour he put them together. There's no meaning. In the article, it have a meaning. Let us see. It's our time trouble. Our time trouble. Uh, but how does that happen? When the companions of the Prophet ask about Resurrection Day at the time spent in their grave, and he revealed the answer, he says, Surat Al-Nazi'at, chapter 79, verse number 46. The day they see it, between two brackets, it will be as if they had stayed but a single evening. This is time travel. I mean, this is the most hilarious, stupid ever statement. Because all of us, we knew, if you are spending a day which is boring, the day is so long, it's so slow, but it's the day, the same day. It's a figure of speech. When the day is happy, fun, the day goes so fast, you go in the morning, the night come, and you don't feel it because it was fun. The more boring it is, the more slow it is. But is it really slow? No. But because you are not busy with activities, time goes slow on you you feel it more but when you are busy you are busy from watching the time as simple as that you know you're busy you don't have time to look at the time or the time now <laughs> so it's a stupid and they try to make it look brother our time is travel here we are traveling in time time and the speed of the spirit okay let's see this one why will people feel in the resurrection day that they have stayed in their graves a very short time? Why? I mean, look how stupid this is. Because if you are dead, you are unconscious with time. What? How? How? How they can feel even they stayed for a short time? I mean, that's stupid. Look, look. Do you see the stupidity? Why will feel people feel feel? Do you see the word feel? I mean, the guy is dead and he feel why they feel when they, in the, why they feel on the resurrection day, they have stayed in their grave. So when they have the feeling when they are in the grave, I mean, you are dead and you are feeling time now. Do you see the stupidity? Ah, but I forgot. I forgot to tell you that Muslims believe in something called the punishment of the grave. When you go inside the grave, there's two angels, they come to you and they ask you three questions. And miraculously, you answer, brother. They ask you, who is your God? If you don't say Allah, they will hit you with the hammer. And you will go down 70 cubits down the earth. And then they ask you a second question. What's your religion? If you say, I am a Christian, they will hit you with the hammer. And you will go again 70 down cubits in the earth. And in your head too. I mean, they focus on the head. And then they ask you the third question. They show you the picture of Muhammad. And he said to who is this guy? Actually, there is a... There is a hilarious video. I don't know if I can find it. Hold on. Muhammad and explain to us the scientific... Let us see. You see, if you search about punishment of the grave, you will find endless numbers of videos with music of scary music, horror, that you go and now to the grave, and now the angels will come to you, and they will ask you questions, and they will say to you, who is Allah? Who is your religion? Who is this guy? The punishment of the grave. Yeah, but let me, there is a, 
there is a there's a video I'm trying to find the uh, speed of light was a limiting velocity man this page froze hold on let us see if I can find the video which is fine I find the, the best video ever explaining the look look all, all look at those mad people look look at those people they have you know this is a religion if people believe this is religion punishment of the grave punishment in the grave do a to urine splashes on the body i mean have you ever heard or body while urinating now this is what the prophet sallallahu alaihi wa sallam warned the muslims from it was reported in a authentic hadith while the prophet ﷺ was walking with some of his companions they passed by two graves and the prophet said والسلام, these dead people are being tormented in the graves over something that is not big by allah it is big meaning that leaving that sin was not a big issue but the sin itself was really big major and he said about one of them he did not protect himself from urine meaning that when he urinated he did not do what was needed to ensure that the urine does not ref uh, uh, deflect back on his clothes, his body, or himself. And this is why he's being tormented in the grave. Brother, so the angels will come and they will beat the hell of you because you have some urine in your foot. The funny, this is a prophet who the Muslim drink his urine. It's okay. They wash their face with his urine. It's okay. They drink his blood, it's okay. He ordered them to drink the camel urine, it's okay. But if you have a urine in your foot, the angels will torture you, brother. And where Muhammad, he learned this scam, as usual, from the Jews. The Jews, they make fun of him, they say stupid things for him, he take it for granted. Read carefully. Relativity of time. And urine. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> Let us see where we can find the hadith. And not only that, after the Jewish women. She mentioned, mentioned to him the punishment of the grave. Muhammad, he never pray without saying, I seek refuge by Allah from the punishment of the grave. Here we go. Read carefully. Who is behind the story? A Jew, as usual. Muhammad is a thief. He steal from Jewish people stupid stories, fiction stories. They used to believe in it, have nothing to do with the Bible. Read carefully. A Jewish woman entered into me and said, who talk in Aisha, the torment of the grave is because of urine. Aisha, she never heard that before. I said, you're lying. <laughs> Aisha is smart. Like, what a stupidity is that? The Jews, they teach their kids that if you don't, it's just to scare the kids so they can't keep themselves clean. If you don't wash yourself, you will go, you will, the angels will come to your grave and they will torture you, okay, Tony? So the child, he will be scared. You know, it's a very sick method, actually, to scare a child. So here, Aisha, she said to her, you are lying, which means that's stupid. She said, no, it's true. We cut our skin and the clothes because of it. The messenger of Allah went out and he prayed to pray and the voice became loud oh man the woman is fighting the jewish woman with aisha trying to convince her that's true he said what is this 
So I told him what she said. He said, she spoke the truth. Huh? Yeah, because she's a Jew. Muhammad, he take whatever the Jews they say. He's trying to make the Jews believe in him. So he cannot oppose them, really. So he worked hard for many years, living between the Jews, trying to convince them, I agree with you on everything. So he said, she spoke the truth. After that day, and listen carefully, after that day, he never offered any prayer, but he said following the prayer, Rabba Jibreel wa Mikail wa Israfil, adding, saying, I seek refuge from the punishment of the grave. He is quoting even Jewish names of Jewish angels in his prayer. Seeking what? Seeking refuge from the fire of the torment of the grave. But remember here, after that, after that, Muhammad, he starts saying this, which means before that day, Muhammad never prays saying, I seek refuge from the punishment of the grave. And this is why Aisha, she accused the Jewish women of lying because she never heard of it. But notice here, it says, after that day, after that day, he never offered a prayer without saying, I seek refuge from the punishment of the grave. He just learned something new, stuck with it. You see the fraud? Do you see the fraud? Isn't it obvious? After that day, never, ever pray without saying at the end, I seek refuge. So what happened all your life? Why you never mentioned the punishment of the grave before? Do you understand me? Why he did not mention it before? How come now suddenly it became so important? For he's a fraud. He just learned something from the Jew. He added to his dictionary. And he stuck with it. That's it. Right? Do we have any Muslim want to say something? So if you go to Muslim articles, they fabricate stories to try to make it science. Look, time and speed of the angels. Sorry, and the speed of the spirit. Speed of the spirit. Hold on. The spirit have a speed. <laughs> hmm. <sighs> the spirit have a speed. Okay. No comment. This is a spiritual speed, though. Speed Scooby Scooby Doo. Spirit time travel. Spirit time travel. Okay. When the spirit travel at an ex exceedingly high speed outside the body of a sleeping or a dead person. <laughs> so now you when you sleep, your spirit go out of you and, and travel. You know, actually yesterday my spirit was in Las Vegas. Yeah, I don't want to tell you, but you know what happened? I felt like I want to eat some open buffet and my, my spirit travel. Yeah, went there, ate some shrimp and lobsters and, you know, and I came back. Yeah. And again, guys, I mean, look, look how they add things and stories. It's not even there. And again, with his recreated body, travel back to Allah on the day of travel back where you idiot. He is still in the earth. The day of resurrection is going to be in the earth. The time element would approach zero when understood according to Einstein. Again, here we go. They explain Allah by Einstein. They cannot explain Allah by Muhammad Hadith. They can explain Allah by Einstein. Remember that. Muhammad Hadith is stupid, so we don't use Muhammad word before he's stupid. We use the Jewish Einstein to explain to us Allah. For Allah cannot be explained by Muhammad the fool, but he can be explained by Einstein. Quran and science. Okay. Do we have any Muslim want to say anything about the stupid things we see in the screen? Anyone have a comment? <clears throat> Quranic interpretation, visa, visa, early time. <laughs> Anyone? All right, we don't have a big number today because we did not inform. Actually, I wasn't planning to go, you know, to go live. 
but I said let us do it again remember guys we will be live on air on my other account quality of life later at night and the topic is why boyfriend and girlfriend is not healthy lifestyle and just to give you a summary of what we will talk about these days people they live in such a way many people they do that boyfriend girlfriend what good can do you what good can do to you what harm can do to you what this is boyfriend and girlfriend thing is it really real so today we will discuss the, such a topic and uh, you don't have to agree with me everything I say is my own personal opinion however prove me wrong uh, which means feel free to prove me wrong so we will be live on air and the topic again why boyfriend and girlfriend not a healthy not healthy lifestyle in the quality of life account as you see in the screen and the link will be posted down the video here and I will post it again for you here we go let us copy the link and post it for everybody so people they can uh, subscribe and turn off turn on your notification yeah this is my other account there we don't speak about Islam there we have to speak about anything except Islam all right so this is what will be our topic for tonight uh, which will be the morning for those who they are in Asia India Indonesia etc and uh, uh, I don't know if you, you will like what you will hear, but you will hear what you need to hear from me. I believe this uh, boyfriend, girlfriend stuff is nothing, nothing healthy. It causes you damage in every way, in every mean. And I will explain to you why when we go live. Uh, many people, they will say to you, no, it's good, it's fun. And always they show you like images of somebody is romantic or you see a person walking with the girl hugging her you know okay well men they hug all women but the question who is the one who will marry you after he hug you men they sleep with all women the question who is the man who will marry you after he sleep with you men they sleep go drink you know party with everyone anyone you know and the question is if he love you why he don't marry you why he want you to just stay as a girlfriend and if you're really you as a girl if you are really decent and if you are a man and you are decent why even you don't love and marry the women you claim that she is your girlfriend don't you love her or you love only her body or you want to have just some fun and throw her in the garbage later later when you find a new girl she is nicer or when she have a new guy he is more handsome so this is a lifestyle I reject totally and you don't have to agree with me but we will talk about it in details and we will show you so you might understand what different about Kalamullah versus Kalimatullah my friend this is all just a fantasy of philosophy the Muslim themselves are very confused about the difference between the word of Allah and the words of Allah because the words of Allah is nothing but the word of Allah but in big number so how can be a different <laughs> you know what I mean guys do you understand what I'm saying when when some when some people they Muslims because they are so confused so they come with stories like there's a difference between the word of Allah and the words of Allah there's no different because the words of Allah is multiple words of Allah so if the word of Allah is different from the words that means we should not correct the word of Allah for the words of Allah containing that word <laughs> don't give a don't give a book of philosophy to a fool otherwise he will turn into a camel and he will eat it all right stupidity is amazing but when, when, you know, when a human being, he is desperate, he doesn't know what to do, trying to prove to us that he have religion, in fact, he don't. Islam is not a religion. Islam is just a stupid collection of cults. 
and other religions. Fictions, as you see, the God, he will torture you because you did pee in your foot. The God have nothing to do. He is worried now because you have broke his command. Okay, what in the Quran it says don't pee in your foot? Well, can you show me? Is that like part of the Ten Commandment in Islam? No, you don't even have Ten Commandment. You broke them all. Right? Uh, uh, Muhammad Qadr, he said, girlfriend and boyfriend is a lifestyle in Christianity. That's a lie, my friend. It is in Islam. I challenge you to show me where in the Bible it says you can take a girlfriend. In the same time, I wish you can challenge me the same. It's your prophet who encouraged your mommy to sleep around. Is that correct? You can take even at least girlfriend and boyfriend in the West when they do it. They don't go to a woman and say to her, can you sleep with me for one day or two days? In Islam, you can do that. This is your Sahih al-Bukhari. And this is the rule of not girlfriend and boyfriend is one night stand or three night stand. Are you there, Mr. Muhammad Qadir? So I made a challenge for you to show me where in the Bible it says you can have a girlfriend, sleep with her. And in the same time, I challenge you to say your prophet is not presenting Islam now by saying any man and women, they can agree to sleep together for a day or two or three. And if they like to increase, they increase. Is that your prophet saying that or me? Muhammad Qadir. Now, Muhammad Qadir, he will play dead. He thought I will not read his text. You cannot find us any teaching in Christianity saying what you are saying. The fact it's you Muslims who practice every day girlfriend and boyfriend. There is a wajib friend. There is a marriage. It's called marriage of friend. If you believe it, what is that? You take a woman to the hotel. You do boom boom, and that's it. You divorce her. Hala. There is a marriage. It's called a travel marriage. What is that? You don't take your wife, would you? If you are going to California. In California, you go to the hotel, you say, can you find me a girl? I want to marry her for a day or two during the time I stay in the hotel. So you don't, you know, you have way more ugly than girlfriend. At least girlfriend and boyfriend, they are not about money. In Islam, the women, she have to be rented. If we go right now and we practice muta, what muta now? We allow transgender, well, Muhammad was a transgender and we can prove it so easy. Do you want to, uh, Mr. Uh, uh, Muhammad Qadr, you want to call me in front of everybody? I can show that Muhammad was a transgender. He is not a man, normal man. I, I can, uh, whole, all his family, actually read my book, Sex and Allah. All his family are sex, homosexual. All his family and all documented from Islamic books. None of them is a Christian. How many of you have my books, Sex and Allah? If you don't have a copy, go and get it from Amazon. All the family of Muhammad are homo. And Muhammad himself, he was a homosexual. Isn't it your prophet? He says, Ibn Ammi qad ardi. My cousin, he raped me. He destroyed my honor by, in, in a sexual way. Isn't it your prophet who kissed a man down his belly? Read carefully. Is that your prophet or my prophet? Is that Sahih or Da'if? Sahih. What happened? Abu Abdul Rahman said blah, 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 blah. Okay. That we were talking to the people, making them laugh. Then the prophet poked him under the ribs and with the stick, he said, let me take retaliation, retaliation. He said, take retaliation. Then he says, you are wearing a shirt, but I am not. The prophet then he raised his shirt and then the man embraced him and began to kiss his side. And then he said, this is what I wanted. Oh, messenger of Allah. The translation is false. The prophet and the man, they are now naked, have no t-shirt and they are kissing each other billy. Down the billy actually, kasah is down the bottom of the billy bottom, down there. How a man is kissing a man there, you tell me. And how a man, he said to other man, this is what I wanted, you tell me. Are you there? 
Don't change the topic, otherwise you are no match, my friend. You are no match. And this is why you coward, you don't dare to call me. And not to forget to mention, when the caliphate, a bunch of Muslims, they came, uh, and they told him, we have a gay imam, and they are complaining that he is seducing them. Read carefully. So we can love together. <clears throat> Mm -hmm. I'm trying to find okay here we go this is your Uthman the caliphate and a bunch of Muslims coming to him let us see the story and we finish with this I went to Uthman ibn Affan which is the caliphate the one who made the Quran for you today is Uthman he was beside uh, uh, and said to him you are the chief of the Muslims in general and you see that have be failing to you we are led salat by a leader who is a fal fitna trial and affliction what does that mean it's talking about a homosexual and we are afraid of being sinful following him osman said ah uh, uh, do salat as a prayer is the best of deeds so when the people do good deed do the same as they do avoid those bad deeds and then it says in our opinion we have, in our opinion, one should not offer Salat behind a feminine person unless there is no alternative. How a feminine person, he is the Imam, and how he is seducing them unless they are homosexual. To make it simple for you, Abdul, if you have a person who is a gay and he is bending his ass in front of you, how he is tempting you unless you yourself, you are a gay. Are you getting the point? Because the complaint is what? They are complaining that he might lead them into sin. Do you see it? He might lead them into a sin. And how he lead them into sin? He bent in the front of them. He wear no underwear. His ass is coming out. You know what the Muslim they do? So how you be tempted by a homosexual unless all of you are homosexual and what the caliphate says so what do it <laughs> because if you are not homosexual you, you will not be really you see he is not saying we should not accept that he is saying he is going to lead us into sin temptation affliction trials trials you have a trials and affliction because he bent over in front of you. I mean, this guy is suffering badly, man. He go to the he go to his house. He close his eyes. He see the butt of this homosexual. He is in trial now, suffering, affliction, affliction. All of this because a guy who is a homosexual he bent in front of you. Well, obviously you are the homosexual, not him. Obviously, there's a story, you can go to the website of the Shia, they have it there, translated, it's in Arabic, but translated in English, it's called Shia Pan. So there's a guy, and I will finish with this, there's a guy, uh, he was screaming, I wish I know who is the one who killed Uthman, you see now he reminds me of Uthman. I wish I know who is the one who killed Uthman. One of the guys, he was like... Uh, wondering what this guy will do because he's saying i wish i know who who killed uthman i wish i know what killed uthman to see what i will do to him so the guy there he says to him and he was a homosexual he said to him what you will do to him he said i will do <coughs> you know the effort the guy he said well i am the one who you know killed uthman and the story says that the guy he put this guy underneath of him and he started doing him from behind and then the guy underneath the homosexual was saying if i know that killing uthman will get me this i will kill uthman every day and i challenge you to say this is not true go to shia pan and you can watch it if i know that killing uthman will bring such a joy for me i will kill uthman every day
he was saying that underneath of the other person and both are Muslims this is your Islam my friend and maybe I can find maybe in different time uh, let us see yeah actually this is the website here we go I found it <clears throat> you can search it yourself it's called Shia Pen Shia Pen an example of morality of Muslim Sunni so Shia and Sunni here they are exposing each other about morality and both of them they have the same disease they claim they claim that they have the highest morality uh, I don't want to go in details because this is very dirty and ugly you know uh, sex toys is halal you know, having sex with the watermelon, watermelon, even watermelon. It's a principle. Repeat. Third example of Sunni morality, Sunni umma, ulama, have ruled in the principality of having sex with watermelon. Watermelon, even watermelon is not safe from the end of the Sunni. Huh? Comment. They are asking the Muslim, the Muslim Shia asking the Muslim Sunni. The Muslim should certainly be grateful that Ibn al-Qayyim, the scholar, has offered the advice, the easiest way of masturbation, and clearly uh, Ibn al-Qayyim has done it a lot in the person, done a lot of personal research and issue. And then he says during the real, and then he said, the Shia, they said it to me, if the muta, muta is in the other hand, is an open license for sexual pleasure. So the Shia, they practice the muta with many, uh, uh, as many women as one can financially afford. The women who engaged in muta are hired women. Thus, it can be performed uh, performed with all women in spectator. Read the garbage. I mean, this garbage. This is your religion. And the funny, they speak about morality. Nobody speak about morality as the Muhammadan. But this is the religion. As an example of Sunni morality, a Salafi woman can suckle a Salafi man with a beard. <laughs> but the funny that the Shia are making fun of the Sunni. But this is Muhammad saying that. It's not the Sunni. So you are making fun of Muhammad. Thank you very much for exposing the faith in Muhammad. Huh? Uh, six, uh, uh, the sixth example of Sunni morality, pedophilia, basirity, and necrophilia can be performed while one is fasting. It's halal. You can have sex with the animal. You can have sex with the dead women. You can have sex with any. I mean, this is this, uh, halal, my friend. Uh, seven example of Sunni morality, uh, a praying behind a drunk person is okay. I'll forget about this one. Eight example of Sunni morality, principality to pay women for sex. Suppose the Shia didn't do that, but the Shia they do it even more. Uh, ninth example of Sunni morality, Fatwa Abu Hunayfa, principality of having sex with his own mother. Halal! His own mother, yes, he's not lying, by the way. It is halal if you do it, even if your daughter or your mother, there's no even punishment if a person. He sleep with his own mother, according to the uh, uh, the the, the uh, Hanafi uh, sect. There is no penalty, and it is not nothing wrong with it. If a person marries a muhram, mother, sister, daughter, and etc., and has sexual intercourse with them, even he admit the fact that he knew why performing the material etc. with that woman. Uh, uh, that he know that this is his mother, he knew this is his sister, he knew this is his daughter, still he sleep with her. Then, according to Abu Hanifa, that was haram for him, but not, even, not only that haram for him, but even according to Abu Hanifa, it is not subjected to any type of Islamic penalty. There's a guy saying, CP the liar, this is your Muslim website, they are giving you even the page number. Guys, do you see the page number? Guys, do you see the page number? Huh? This is Shia website. This is not me. The funny I read for them what is written in their books. They say to me, a liar. Do you see the page number? Do you see it? The book name, the page number, you click it and it actually you go to the link. And this is the other one. And this is the other one. All of them you have the reference. All right. <clears throat> My friend, the Muslims are trying to say uh, about about Ayah Sophia. 
Let me give you the answer from the Quran. Let me give you the answer from the Quran. The Muslims, they defeated the Roman and they took Constantinia. Right? But look what the Quran says. And this is what will happen to you. The chapter of the Roman. The Roman <laughs> were defeated. And they will be victorious in a few years. And my friend, we will take back Constantinia and we will kick out all the occupation from our land, the same as we did in Jerusalem. The Roman being defeated, but they will be victorious. And then the believers will rejoice. That is us. Even your Quran get you busted. And just think about it, Muhammadan. What if America decide right now to take Constantinia? Can we take it? Will take us two days, maybe 24 hours. That is reality. But you are lucky we don't have until now someone who decide to do it and take it. But time will come. You are no match in any way, in any mean to Christian power. So don't challenge us. Don't even think about it. Russia alone can swallow you, all of you. Alone. Actually, Russia alone can destroy the whole earth more than 20 times. The whole earth, including the NATO. So you are not, no match. Don't talk about victory. You are a coward. You are a thief. And now you are helping us to prove that you are a thief, taking our churches, yet you claim that the Jews cannot take back their temple. And now we have a great reason to take back the temple and build it again. For you just did, and the whole world is witness. You cannot say this, you cannot do that. You cannot say it no more. You did that. And remember, they said you're different. Aya Sophia is our church. We are the one who built it. The Aqsa Mosque is not a mosque. This is a temple of the Jews. And you did the same as you did with Aya Sophia with it. We will get it back. It's just a matter of time. So, we feel sad about it. Yes. But my friend, we are always victorious. Go to Turkey and see how many Muslims left. And the coming election, you will see what is happening. All the game is Erdogan trying to win the election, hoping that by doing this, he will get more vote. But we knew that in Turkey, there is no real vote anyway. When Muslims took over, it's very hard to kick them out because they corrupt the vote. However, even with vote corruption, I believe Erdogan is over. His, his days is counting. Just wait what will come from the consequence of what he did with Hagia Sophia. Watch your economy. Watch the future of Turkey until Erdogan go. And just let me know. So I want to say thank you guys for being here. And the Romans were defeated and they will be victorious. And the believers will rejoice. And if you think you can win against us, you are mistaken. Actually, even you Muslims believed that the one who will come back is the Messiah. And he is the one who will bring victory. But as usual, the Muslims, they, have the same, they are the same as a bold person who have no hair, speaking about the beauty of the hair of his neighbor. They have nothing beautiful in their religion, their cult. So they speak about the Messiah coming back. The Messiah will come back to us. That's why our name is a Christian, Christ. We are Christians. Who are you? You are following a child molester, a gang leader, a thief, a criminal, a killer. Even you have no shame in the year 2020 to steal a church. How you can explain that? You cannot. I saw a comment where a Muslim says, well, look what they did in Spain. Our friend, you, if Spain does not belong to you, why you are in Spain? They kick you out from their land. You cannot claim anything there. And the funny, by the way, Muslims, they claim that they build in Spain beautiful buildings. Many people do not know. Go and read the book of Ibn Khaldun, the famous philosopher who lived in Spain at that time. He will tell you that the Arab are savage. They don't know how to build. They are willing to destroy a library to burn the books to cook in it. They are willing to destroy a palace to take the wood from the roof to use, to use it for fire. This is Ibn Khaldun. He was living in Spain. The one who built those buildings are the Spanish. 
until now in the Middle East, you cannot even make a ring of jewelry. The one who make it is either the Christians and the Jews. This is why until now, the jewelry market closed in Saturday and Sunday, for they are the one who can make it. All the mosques in the Middle East, until not long time, until like the new uh, way to build with concrete, all those mosques are built by Middle Eastern Christians, for Muslims do not know how to build. And you can ask anyone, the one who do the iron work is a Christian. Even the invasion, the Muslims they did to Spain, they forced the Christians in Syria, the, the Phoenician people, to make the ship for them so they can use it to invade. They don't even know how to make ship. That is the truth. Don't go there. <clears throat> anyway, don't forget to download the video because it's going to be taken down very soon. And don't forget to download my books. In the previous video, we give them for free. The Russian, the Albanian, and Malay. And soon, I will publish a book in Polish for free too for those who they speak Polish language. Again, before we finish, uh, we will be live on air in the other channel. And this is the link for it. Join us after eight hours from now, if you care. And uh, <clears throat> in case I'm a little bit late because I will be out, uh, but I think I will be before that time, I will be home. In case I'm late, just wait for me, guys, and I will text you and I will inform you if I will be late. But mostly I will be on time. So I want to say thank you. When your Quran will be out, I don't know. I'm, I'm working it, you know, slowly. Take out of time. Because too many things to do at the same time. So I want to say thank you for being here, guys. May the Lord bless you. And until we see you soon again, with relativity of time, laughing at Muhammad and his fool gang trying to defend him, trying to make him look legitimate, trying to make him look like a prophet, when the fact he don't fit even to be a postman. Because you see, if to work as a postman, you have to be decent. The first condition of a postman is decency, to deliver a letter. Muhammad, he cannot be trusted as a postman. He's a thief. Even his followers accuse him to be a thief. His followers. His followers accuse his wife to be a whore. His followers, not the Jews. His followers accuse him of all horrible things. And the Quran confirmed it. Thank you. May the Lord bless you. Christ is Lord. Islam is false. And see you soon again.